uh, and over the years that it has been in operation up to 2020, looking at those challenges, what was the main problem in 2011? At that particular time, the main challenge was uh, non-representation in the media platforms. Mm. So we were asking ourselves, uh, despite everything happening and the growth in the media, uh, there was no, at that particular time, there was no representation yes. of deaf persons in the media. We didn't have a uh, sign language interpreter caption, what we currently have. Mm -hmm. So when we were getting into the space, we were asking ourselves, how can we push, how can we advocate for more inclusion of deaf persons in this platform? However, over the years we have evolved, right now we, we are very grateful for the new policies and the new constitution that has been there. Yes. And as you can see right, right, right now as you're doing this, Media representation we have a is sign not language a problem. interpreter, <laughs> which I'm really grateful yeah. about that. Uh, so uh, we have evolved over the years. So what we are currently doing as an organization, we uh, lobby and work with county government mm -hmm. in development of policies that are inclusive. We also work with private institutions to, to better their policies to be more inclusive to deaf persons. Yeah. For example, we worked with Embu County in uh, coming up with public participation, but our particular interest at that particular was to have deaf person included in the whole process, mm -hmm. from the board representation to actual participation uh, within public participation space. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are also very key in uh, uh, amplifying deaf issues uh, mm. on online platforms. So we're talking about app development, how can we use this technology space in ensuring that it is inclusive uh, also to people with disability, in this particular case, yeah. to deaf persons. We are also key, as I said, in the media, Though not in the news, uh, we are also very key in developing of content. Mm -hmm. We are out there co developing content that are disability friendly, that are inclusive, specifically in sign language. So we we do a lot of movies, but movies that are not only entertaining, yes. but they're also educating. Okay. Yes. And now, also we work with deaf learning institutions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, it, all this is in a bit to just try and bring down the barriers that are there between the deaf and the hearing. Now, let me just uh, hear from what you have seen over the years, looking at the majority of the population as you interact with the different po people in the different projects that you have embarked on. What are some of the biggest misconceptions have you come across when it comes to persons who have hearing impairment? Impairment. First of all, uh, the thinking that deaf persons, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the element of they are disabled. The disability element comes in uh, with the interaction with the barriers, which is communication challenge. Mm. If this barrier was to be broken, uh, which is the communication barrier, that means there would be no barrier. In the first place, that means they can be fully included. So there's that misconception that, you know, less of, of a human being, yet... Uh, with right inclusion, uh, yeah. with people putting the right things in place, that means they can be fully included. The thing is, if your voice is silent, uh, people are not likely to understand your potential. Mm. So in this silent world, uh, people are not able to identify, to see and appreciate your talent, your skills, and what actually you can contribute into the, into the community. So if the thing is, if you can be more inclusive, if you can in element of you know, communication and listen, to their voice, because at the end of the day, there is a voice. It may not be audio voice, it mm -hmm. may not be through the speech, but it can be through, you know, sign language and just facilitating that element between the hearing and the, you know, the, the deaf person. Yeah. And that's why we are more on mainstreaming and breaking that specific barrier for communication and information access. So most of the population have mostly been focusing on the impairment as opposed to the individual uh, per se. I exactly. And their strength yeah. as individuals. Now, looking at, you know, deaf, deafness as, you know, one of the invisible disabilities that are there, do you think the fact that you know, it is invisible has also contributed to the fact that not, not much information is there when it comes to awareness and how to go about in, the, in just breaking down this communication barrier? Exactly. You know, when people hear the word disability, yeah. uh, there's this element of pity that comes in. Absolutely. An element of luck. Yeah. Uh, so when you think you're like, oh, somebody in a wheelchair, so they might need to be pushed. Oh, somebody is visual, they might need a white kid. And as generally as human being, you feel the element of I want to help. Mm. But there's this specific person uh, who there's nothing physically visible yeah. in your naked eyes until you interact with me. Maybe you say hi, and I'm not responding back to you. So you're like, okay. And then you, you might be like, oh, this one is just ignoring me. So the thing is, uh, if you go an extra mile of like, why not answering back to me? Like, oh, I'm deaf. And then you get an extra mile of, oh, how can I now be able actually to communicate with you mm. effectively? So it's just that specific, but that is not visible. And there's not this, uh, you know, visual represent, you know, element of uh, 
like you can actually see exactly it. yeah yes and i think that is where we are all the whole aspect of ignorance comes in and we just try to hide behind this veil of ignorance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now looking at over what you guys have been experiencing over the years in trying just to bridge this gap from where you sit what do you think needs to be done to just make sure that we are able to in as much as we can't bridge that gap right now instantaneously mm -hmm. but efforts that can be put towards bridging this gap when it comes to the communication barrier between the hearing and the deaf uh, first is a holistic approach mm -hmm. uh, as government. First, you need to get the right number of you know the deaf persons in Kenya. There has been these varying numbers. Mm -hmm. Per the statistics, it says around three hundred and something thousand. But as per other data, we talk about you know eight hundred thousand. So more research to identify the actual number of deaf persons in the country. Number two, even the cause of deafness in the country. If we get to know, is it genetic? Is it out of something that can be actually you know be prevented? So as a government, they need to be, you know, to look more into that. Thirdly, we need to invest more into education, deaf education. Uh, there has been a, a complaint that there's low performance, and uh, it can be as a result of, again, low expectation. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, we don't expect a lot of, you know, a lot of high performance and all that. We need to have the right expectation and invest more into deaf education in terms of quality, access and quality education specifically. We also need to be more inclusive, in everything that we do, yes. uh, but uh, I'm I'm glad that every day we are we are developing in the name, you know, in terms of information access. We are developing yeah. every day. We didn't have we, we had zero representation at all. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you can see that is you know developing. We have the news, we have the breaking news, but you can also include more program because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we learn and we interact daily. It's not that a, a single one hour of the day or yes. three hours of the day. We have like all of us, we have the 24 hours. How can we be more inclusive in these 24 hours? As county government, when you're doing our budgeting, how much do we allocate to disability? And specifically, you know, we just have this lump sum. Eh? We, we have this specific budget for people with disability. Mm -hmm. Question is, in this lump sum, you know, amount, eh, how much have you set aside eh, yes. for deaf persons? Particularly. Exactly, okay. yes. Now, you have mentioned the whole issue to do with the data and how it will go a long way to just making sure that, you know, the proper assistance is given to these persons who are in need. But now comes in the question of getting to those who are actually in need down in the grassroots because you find that those who are known uh, may be aware of how they can get this assistance. But what of the population who are not in the loop when it comes to information on the different institutions and organizations that are put in place to assist them? How then can they be included? Uh, we, we have a government parastatal, that is National Council of Persons with Disability. Mm. They are more in charge of identification and mobilization and you know, registration. Yes. Because if you're not registered, if your daughter is not in the system, that means you do not exist. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how do they do their work? How can you partner with the local institution on the ground? Okay. We have local you know, institution on the ground whom you can partner with because they are more in touch. How can you work with local sub areas how can you work with local chiefs how can you work with local churches how again do you reach parents how do you educate parents of these children uh, mm -hmm. to be able to know there are these platforms uh, that my child uh, needs to be linked into how do i relay the information for example recently there was some money being given out to you know due to covid to yes. with disability but the question is how was it relayed out there when people are going to register, did people, you know, did deaf person actually get to know mm. there is something like this that is taking place? Yes. How can you be able to ensure, even when you are doing your disability work, that whatever you are doing again, eh, deaf persons are able to know what is going on? All right. And in light of just trying to make sure that they are in the loop in regards to what is happening, I want us to look at some of the challenges that you know are facing uh, when it comes, challenges that we as a country are facing when it comes to mainstreaming issues of you know uh, disability and other forms of uh, uh, deafness and other forms of disability. And let's just start with that flow of information properly. Um, looking at the county governments, what role do you think they can play to just make sure when it comes to getting information out at the grassroots where you know there aren't uh, it doesn't have to use you know forms of media but the local population to get information to the people how can that be implemented or, at, or rather refined to make sure that the deaf are also included uh, that takes me back when we are developing the public participation act of embu county with mm -hmm. the county government uh, normally what happens as per the constitution is uh, yes you're supposed to make sure that your constituent 
get to know that there's these things that are taking place. Mm -hmm. So people end up using platforms like newspaper. Mm -hmm. Question is, uh, how many deaf people are able to you know, access newspaper mm -hmm. or even comprehend the language uh, in the, the newspaper? Yeah. That is one. Again, people use local radios, which you know we have a lot of platforms out there in form of radio. But the question is, uh, as deaf persons, uh, that is, you know, audio, that is sound. Yeah. Deaf person cannot really link and get it when, when you're using radio. And then we have the television. Mm -hmm. When you're doing the television, you just do an audio advert again. Again, you've Leaves discriminated uh, yeah. the deaf person. But again, county government have got structures. We, they have ministries. Maybe some of them, they give them different names. Some of them use, you know, Ministry of Gender in, within the county. Mm -hmm. How can this specific Department of Gender in their planning ensure that they are inclusive to deaf person and they are making other institutions and other ministries within the county are mainstreaming whatever they are doing? Mm -hmm. Because if as, an, as a structure, as an institution, uh, let's say in this specific part, let's use gender as a department. Uh, so this gender department is supposed to work with other ministries within the county mm -hmm. to ensure that whatever they are doing uh, is actually reaching deaf persons. We can use platforms, you know, we have a website. How can you make that specific website accessible? Just, the thing is, when it comes to mainstreaming, uh, it's going the extra mile and wanting to include uh, that person who might not necessarily be in, or might not be the larger population mm -hmm. in your work. All right. Now let's just look at another issue when it comes to the challenges when it comes to mainstreaming um, deafness and other forms of disability. And let's look at education. Mm -hmm. And especially now during this COVID time where, you know, um, so many children, uh, schools have been closed mm -hmm. and education has been taken to the online platform. How is the, how, ha what are some of the problems that have been when it comes to delivery of education to include persons with the, uh, deafness? And of course, what can be done to just ease in this burden? Uh, that saddens me. One, how the schools were closed. It mm -hmm. was abrupt. Yes. While our children really briefed uh, why the schools are being closed mm -hmm. and what they should expect. Yeah. That is one question. Two, now that they're at home uh, and a lot of things are taking place, are they even aware of what is taking place and why it's taking place? Why are people wearing masks and all this? Three, the government is moving towards, you know, online platform, uh, using the platform, the government, you know, training edu tv question is what is being delivered there it's again being done by regular teachers uh, using mm -hmm. audio and the few times that they are using an interpreter it's different to interpret teaching you know it's different to interpret and actually deliver into sign language that's what something that parents are really comp you know complaining that yeah. you can't really interpret a lesson you need to teach that lesson mm -hmm. that may not necessarily you know go hand in hand with what with interpretation can we have it delivered fully in sign language uh, for deaf person number three i think this week the government is rolling out community-based learning uh, where they're asking teachers within the community to 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 train and to teach like 15 you know safely 15 students question is uh, those teachers within those community areas uh, whom are they likely to teach mm -hmm. Uh, is it possible for you to have a class of hearing and deaf person at the same time? That specific teacher themselves, uh, do they know sign language? Mm. In, uh, are they teachers in a deaf school? So that means deaf children uh, are not able to access what even this community-based learning that the government is rolling out this week. Yeah. Number four, we have like a lot of platforms, online platforms and all that. But again, this online platform, uh, our deaf children... Uh, are not able to access number one do they have uh these digital infrastructure infrastructure yeah. do they have the laptops do they have the data bundles do they do they even have those phones do they even know the parents again we're like telling the parents this time around it's time that as a parent uh, you get involved in your ch you know in your child education question is does this parent themselves know sign language and mm -hmm. It's, it's a sad, you know, situation that parents do not know sign language. So again, they cannot even help their children through in revision. And which revision? They didn't even have books to carry even home. So we are having a process from March, mm -hmm. likely to go to, you know, January of no learning. Don't forget, uh, deaf education in Kenya has 
you know, has been lagging behind. Absolutely. Performance has been very poor. Yeah. So now what happens, sir, uh, if you get from March to January of no learning, that means you have totally regressed and gone back altogether. That means it might likely to be worse. And something that the government needs to ask itself, the Ministry of Action needs to ask itself, it, I, I, don't, I really don't know, honestly. It's just a whole it's, messy situation. It's a messy situation, it's a sad situation. And looking at how we can just try to help the situate the situation better, given we are embarking on this community learning uh, program, do you think our teachers need to go through uh, sign language uh, training to just make sure that, especially now that we are having this um, community-based learning, because you're going to be teaching in the area that you are located, mm -hmm. and you might find a deaf pupil there. Do you think all teachers need to have some form of sign language training? Yes, not as all a requirement. Teachers. Yes, actually, sign language as a should requirement. be a language that is taught, even in not just by teach to teachers, but yes. to regular school. Because if sign language was taught to all school, that means you, in your delivery of work wherever you are, you'd be able to be inclusive to a deaf person. Yes. If teachers, no, you're talking about teachers. Mm -hmm. If all teachers were taught sign language, that means they would be able to deliver in to deaf children. Yes. But at the same time, let's, uh, let's be realistic. Uh, we say no, no that there's this challenge and teachers need to learn sign language. Mm -hmm. The duration of learning, understanding? Mm -hmm. it, you just, it's not something that you just learn within a week or within a day and then you go and deliver. So really the practicality of it, it's a little bit challenging and needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. But yes, I wish that we, it's, we know that we're seeing this big challenge uh, it's time that we might we need to reconsider the government the, the minister of education need to reconsider do we introduce sign language uh, into the curriculum uh, regular school because don't forget sign language uh, mm -hmm. is uh, you know a language a that language is within the itself. constitution yeah. it's our third language as a country we have english kiswahili and sign language so can we think of now having sign language uh, as one of the you know, course and subject within the normal learning. And it will help bring down this communication bias exactly, straight from exactly. schools. Yes. By the time the young pupils are getting out there, mm -hmm. they already know how to communicate regardless of, you know, whether you are deaf or hearing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at issues to do with um, political goodwill. And I want a very honest feedback from you. Do you think there is that political goodwill from the national government, the county governments, our representatives, when it comes to just fighting and championing for the deaf and other uh, people with other forms of disabilities? That's a very Genuinely. tricky. That's a very tricky question that I may not really answer <laughs> yes or no. Reason being, uh, uh, right now it looks like they don't. There is no that political goodwill. Mm -hmm. But question is, are they even aware of the challenges uh, that exist? Number two, if they are aware. Do they know how to go about, how to bridge this gap? Fine, yes. there's this problem. Uh, are they willing to work with the deaf persons, uh, with the deaf organizations out there? We have a whole body for deaf persons in the country. Are they willing to partner with such bodies uh, to, okay, there's this challenge. How can we work with this challenge uh, to solve this problem? So the will, it's, you know, it's a tricky thing to say yes. Uh, but we have been seeing some effort, but there is more to be done. There is really more to be done that is not yet done. All right. Yes. Now, uh, another issue is when it comes to representation. There's always been this conversation, you know, we are not properly represented. Uh, represented. Women have been at the forefront saying, you know, you cannot have a man represent the needs of women. Now, bringing the situation to persons with hearing impairment. Do you feel representation is adequate to just get the issues out there and get the necessary assistance that will be relevant to the problems on ground? A big no. <laughs> a big no. If you look at the representation out there, the thing is that we have been doing wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. It's taking disability as a disability. But don't forget the disability, cover? just a bracket thing like disability. Mm -hmm. So even though within the disability, you find there are some categories of disability mm -hmm. that again are being excluded. Uh, we talk about re you know, nomination, nominated MCAs, there has to be a, a woman, there has to be a youth, and there has to be a person with disability. Do we have any out there who is deaf? No. Uh, we talk about national bodies for disability. Mm -hmm. Do we have, you know, a number that you can really say this is a very good number 
that are people, you know, that are deaf persons, we don't have. So the representation is a big no, but the, it's, a thing, it's because we take uh, disability as a bracket. Mm. Forgetting uh, we have categories of different disability within that big bracket. Uh, and right. we need again to work and, you know, including uh, even the minority of that disability. Because I think from the data that was released by, you know, when, during census, I think uh, deaf was a third category. So you find other like physical disability have carrying a bigger number, mm -hmm. followed by visual disability. And again, so you, we are, we're still lagging behind. Deaf is still lagging behind representation. There's more, more, a lot more needs to be done. A lot that more end. needs to be done. Now, coming to the general population and looking at us as a people, you know, the African people, we are very cultural, yeah? And you find we tend to uh, associate, you know, uh, forms of disability with some cultural disposition. Has that been a problem in your fight to just bring more attention to uh, persons with deaf deafness? Yes, but it has been improving with time. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we are coming from an era where people used to link disability with witchcraft. Imagine. Uh, with curses. Uh, so people used to hide and didn't know really what to do. And that was really used to stigmatize. So we have the generation of deaf persons uh, mm. who have really gone through a very challenging time uh, of, you know, like you are this unwanted, uh, a curse and all that. But now we are coming again to an era of people are really getting to understand uh, mm. causes of disability within a country. People are yes. really getting to know there are actually platforms out there that you know that are friendly to people with disability. We have schools. Before we didn't have a lot of schools. When as a parent, when you get a child. Uh, you know, who is deaf, you really know where to start. You didn't know where to take the child to school to. They wouldn't fit in a normal regular school. Mm -hmm. But with time, things are improving. The cultural element, you know, the whole belief that, you know, it's uh, witchcraft, it's mm -hmm. curses, it, it's, it's improving. But we still have some communities in the country who are still struggling with, is, with this issue. All right. Now, before we get to move on to a different aspect, I want us to look at one final issue, and this is in regards to policies that are in place. You had mentioned this earlier, but, you know, when it comes to the implementation bit of policies that are pro-disability um, and especially invisible disabilities, how are we doing? As a country, we have very good written policies. Yeah. Extremely good written policies. Pretty on paper. Pretty on paper. <laughs> Question is, uh, the implementation bit of it. Mm. And... Uh, uh, as much as you want to do more policies, more, you know, more policies out there, uh, l let's first also work on implementing what is existing. Mm -hmm. Let's work on what is existing. And if that existing becomes a reality, it will really be a good reality. Uh, yes. All right. Now, remember, we are talking about, you know, challenges that are facing persons who are living with invisible disabilities and more specifically the deaf in our community and just trying to see how we can best address these issues. Now, before we continue with this discussion, we want to quickly switch to a live feed that we are receiving right now via Zoom of the ambassador, uh, uh, the CS for Sports, Culture and Heritage, Ambassador Amina Mohammed via Zoom from Kencom House, where she will be launching a report that will be giving details in regards to the protocols on the resumption of sporting activities here in the country. Let's listen in.